Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Sephron Olive, and it's time for a very sweet edition of Budget Magic. So we've been waiting around for a while now for Eldritch Moon to finally release on Magic Online, and it finally actually happen. So we have Eldritch Moon cards to play with, which means we are heading to Standard to have our very first budget magic of Eldritch Moon Standard season. And I'm super excited because our deck is super sweet. I did a bunch of brewing, trying to figure out what I wanted to play for the very first week of Eldritch Moon Standard and Budget Magic, and I'm super happy with where we ended up. We ended up with a deck that I'm calling Blue Green Emerge. As you can see, 83 bucks in the paper world, 52 ticks online, so not bad at all for a super powerful standard deck. A quick reminder before we break down Blue Green Emerge, if you enjoy Budget Magic and this Blue Green Emerge deck, it would be amazing of you if you could take a minute, click the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. Those are all great ways you can support the site, so that would be super sweet. Anyway, let's talk Blue Green Emerge in standard. So this deck is looking to kind of go underneath and over the top of what's going on in the format. The spell quellers, the bank companies, all that stuff. So to start off, we have a bunch of mana creatures. Of course, we're in standard. We don't get Birds of Paradise. We don't get Land and War Elves, the one-drop mana creatures. But we have the full eight two-drop mana creatures in Deathcap Cultivator and Leaf Gilder. And the main thing these cards do is speed up our clock. So we get to start playing our four drops on turn three, and then maybe playing eh, eight drops, ten drops on turn four, which is usually pretty good. We'll talk more about that in a minute, though. Then we have some interesting sources of card advantage. So our deck, one of the neat things about it, it is 100% in the main deck, creatures and lands. So we have 36 creatures, we have 24 lands, that is the main deck of Blue Green Emerge. So something like Duskwatch Recruiter is insanely good in our deck because we're almost always going to hit a creature with its pay to win a green, look at the top three, take a creature from it and put it in our hand. It also takes advantage of the fact that we have those mana creatures, so we have enough mana that we can often activate this multiple times in a turn, cycle through our deck, just keep finding creatures, eventually find our finishers and win the game. And you'll see as we talk about this deck, one of the ways we win in kind of the mid game or the late game is by chaining together some really powerful creatures. So Duskwatch helps set that up. Follow Miss Airy does two things for the deck. First, it's kind of a one-shot Duskwatch Recruiter when it enters the battlefield. You look at the top four cards of your library, you grab a creature, just like Duskwatch. Since we have so many creatures, it's usually going to hit. At the same time, you probably guessed, based on the name of our deck, Blue Green Emerge, that we have some Emerge cards. And Foul Emissary is literally designed to work with Emerge. It actually says it right on the card. When you sacrifice it while casting a spell with Emerge, uh, you get a 3-2 colorless Eldrazi horror creature token. So you get value on both sides. As a 1-1 one, one for 3, it's not great. But, like I said, we get a creature in our hand when it enters the battlefield, which we like. And we're emerging things, so we get that Eldrazi Scion quite often as well when we emerge it. So, mana creatures, card advantage. Then we have this go wide package. So we play a bunch of creatures and these creatures kind of like foul emissary do th two things for our deck. For one, they're creatures that we can emerge and we'll talk more about emerging very shortly. Uh, so they're the right mana cost that if we can play like an eyeless watcher or a whirler rogue on turn three or turn four, then on turn four, turn five, we are going to be able to cast some huge finisher by sacking the Eyeless Watcher or Whirler Rogue, and because they make tokens when they enter the battlefield, even when we sack them, they're still leaving behind some amount of value. The other thing that these cards do that's super important is they let us go wide. So Eldrazi Sky Spawner, we get a 2-1 Flyer, which is great. Also get a 1-1 Eldrazi Cyan token. Eyeless Watcher, only a 1-1 for 4, but we get two Cyan tokens. Whirler Rogue, 2-2 for 4, but we get two Thopter tokens, plus sometimes we do take advantage of the tapping the Thopters to make something unblockable. So, Mana Dorks, use them to cast our Whirler Rogues and our Eyeless Watchers quickly. Then after that, we kind of have two Emerge plans that are separate, but also loosely connected. So first off, we have Decimator of the Provinces, which 
apparently is in a different language in the MTG Goldfish database, so sorry about that, but what it is, is a 10 mana 7-7 seven, seven with haste and trample, but we can emerge it for 6 and 3 green, so for 9 mana we can emerge it, and when we cast it, it gives all our other creatures plus 2, plus 2, and trample, so it's like an overrun essentially, attached to a 7-7 seven, seven haste trample body, it's almost Crater Hoof Behemoth, similar to Crater Hoof Behemoth. So the idea with this one is, we just talked about all those token generators, the Whirler Rogues and the Eyeless Watchers, well we play the Eyeless Watchers, we play our Mana Dorks, then on turn 5, we sack our Whirler Rogue or an Eyeless Watcher, cast the Decimator, we give all those tokens we've been making and the Mana Dorks we played on turn 2, we give them all plus 2, plus 2 and trample, plus we get this huge 7-7, seven, seven, we swing with everything and win the game. So that's kind of the first emerge plan that we have going on. Then we have one of my favorite cards in the whole set, Elder Deep Fiend, 8 mana 6-5 with flash, but you can emerge for 7, which happens to be on curve to cast on turn 4, potentially. The power of Elder Deep Fiend is we can cast it on our opponent's upkeep and tap down all of their lands to time walk them. That's one of the things we do with Elder Deep Fiend quite often. The other thing it does is taps down our opponent's creatures, so we cast on their opponent's upkeep, tap some lands if we need to, tap down whatever blockers they have, and then we're free to swing in with our 6-5 and all those creatures we've been playing along the way and close out the game that way. But the real trick of this deck is it kinda has a sweet combo finish. So I mentioned Duskwatch Recruiter, Foul Emissary. They dig through our deck and help us find our Decimator of the Provinces. They help us find our Elder Deep Fiend. Well, we also have Sanctum of Ugin which adds a colorless, not really exciting, but whenever we cast a colorless spell with converted mana cost 7 or greater, which means Decimator of the Provinces or Elder Deep Fiend, we can sag it and search for a colorless creature card and put it in our hand. So what we really want to do with this deck is kind of combo off where we, starting on turn 4, we Elder Deep Fiend, tap our opponent out, the next turn we get in a bit of damage, hopefully sack a Sanctum of Ugin to get another Elder Deep Fiend, or have multiples from our Dusk Watches and Foul Emissaries. Then we can sack the first Elder Deep Fiend to the second Elder Deep Fiend, tap our opponent out, get in some more damage. Since Elder Deep Fiend costs 8 mana, the merge is only 2 mana, which means we can likely play another Foul Emissary, an Eldrazi Sky Spawner, along with it on turn 5, and still have enough mana to emerge Elder Deep Fiend. Then, of course, we sack the science, uh, Sanctum of Ugin, or we already have in our hand. The third time, eh, we can get another Elder Deep Fiend and keep going like that if we want to. But a lot of times, that's where we search up the Decimator of Provinces, and then we cast it on our next turn. Everything gets trampled. Our opponent's already tapped out because we've been tapping them out with Elder Deep Fiend. So we just kind of combo off sort of like turbo turns, like kind of that same feeling, but instead of actually taking extra turns, we're just tapping our opponent out so they don't get a turn. So that is kind of the actual plan of this deck, involves Sanctum of Ugin. Sanctum of Ugin is a super important card because it allows us to chain these spells together, and that's how we win the game. Like, one of these cards is good, but what is great in game winning is when we cast Elder Deep Fiend, next turn Elder Deep Fiend, next turn Decimator Provinces, something like that, that's what closes out the game and makes this deck super powerful. The rest of the mana base, West Flabby, we got a lot of creatures, it's kind of a backup plan, only a one-off because we already got a lot of colorless lands. A single Gyre Sanitarium, another way to filter through our deck to find our big finishers, make sure we have the ability to chain together the Elder Deep Fiends and the Decimators instead of just casting one of them. Lumbering Falls as a dual land also turns into a creature. Yab Maya Coast, Woodland Stream, more dual lands. Our mana costs are kind of stringent. We want double blue for our Elder Deep Fiend on turn 3, 4, something like that. And then we also want triple green for the Decimator of Provinces eh, on turn 4 or 5, somewhere in there. So we want a lot of duels. And then some forests and some islands. As far as the sideboard, we get some more cool emerge cards to deal with specific problems. Uh, Mockery of Nature, 6-5, 
for nine, emerges for eight, seven and one green. And when we cast it, we get to destroy an artifact or enchantment. Lash Weed Lurker, kind of the same way, but we put a non-land permanent on top of its owner's library. So that's a way we can kind of get out from under a Planeswalker for a turn or something. Speaking of Planeswalkers, we do have some removal on the sideboard with four copies of Imprisoned in the Moon. Super excited for this card in standard because one of the things you don't really get in a blue-green deck is actual removal. So if our opponent plays a Planeswalker, that could be really bad for us or a big creature, a Dragonlord of Tarka or something, and we're not to the point of comboing off, that's pretty annoying. But Imprison in the Moon takes care of all of that stuff for three mana. It's like the blue Oblivion Ring, so we get some real removal spells, even though our deck is blue-green, a color combination that doesn't usually get real removal. And then another really important card is Evolutionary Leap. So one of the ways decks will try to beat us is just kind of killing our four drops so we can't really emerge things, kind of one for oneing us into the ground using Kozlik's Return or Languish to sweep away our stuff before we can emerge out a big threat. Evolutionary Leap makes it really hard for our opponent to beat us with removal because when our opponent goes to kill something, we just sack that thing and get something else. And then, of course, we got some negates to fight counter battles to make sure people aren't countering our Elder Deep Fiends, uh, protect us from discard, and other removal spells. A big one is the Sweepers. That's one group of cards I'm really scared of with this deck is Radiant Flames, Kozlik's Return, Languish, because other than our actual finishers in Elder Deep Fiend and Decimator of the Provinces, they just wipe away our entire board. So it's a little bit scary and we can kind of get wrecked by those, but negate helps. And then just a single summary dismissal to deal with Eldrazi's essentially, Ulamog's, Emrakul's, and so forth. So that is blue-green emerge in standard. And I had a blast playing this deck this week. It is so fun. When I saw Elder Deep Fiend spoiled, I was like, this card is insane. It's got to be one of the best cards in the set. The first week in Standard, it showed up a little bit, but not all that much. And now that I've got my hands on it and got to play with it, it is as good as advertised, maybe even better than advertised. It is such a powerful card, and Decimator of the Provinces is pretty underrated as well. It's not quite Crater Hoof Behemoth, but when you're casting it on turn five with a whole bunch of creatures on the battlefield, it's still going to close out a lot of games. And the combo aspect of, of being able to chain together these cards is what really makes it worth it. So just multiples, it is a great feeling and a horrible feeling for opponents when we Elder Deep Fiend them on their upkeep three times in a row, starting on turn four to tap down all their lands so they don't get to do anything and then finish them off with the Decimator of Provinces. It feels so good and it is just super awesome and it is way more consistent than you would imagine because we got a lot of ways to dig through a deck and find it. So seriously, I love this deck. I have been having so much fun playing it and I think you will too. Anyway, that's been our deck tag for Blue Green Emerge in Eldritch Moon Standard. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy the videos, and I will talk to you soon.